Okay, so we have finished up uh, chapter 8, and we are going to today uh, have a uh, video. Uh, getting a little tired, mouth's getting a little, uh, uh, wires are getting crossed or something. Um, as we did before, I'm going to provide four review videos for you this week, starting today. And for the next three videos are going to be review. It turns out we have four chapters on this particular celebration of learning. So I want to have one example that I think is really illustrates the most important things about that chapter. Um, one for each uh, video. Okay, so today we're going to go back to chapter five. Let me actually put that up here. This is from chapter five. And we're going to do an example of a block moving up a hill. We've got a block, this is Newton's Laws chapter. We've got a block moving up the hill, and uh, we're going to rotate our axes up the hill. Now before, oftentimes we went down the hill, it doesn't make any difference, we can go either way. So we're going to rotate the axes up the hill, and we're going to sum forces. Okay? What we want to know is this, if the angle is 32 degrees, if the mass is 1.5 kilograms, if the initial speed is 3.7 meters per second uphill, what is the displacement D and what is the normal force N? That's what we want to know. And so what I want to do here is do the right thing. And that is to draw a free body diagram of this block right here. That's the first step, as you'll remember. So free body diagram. I'm going to go ahead and impose our axes here going up the hill. All right, like this. My blue, oh, there it is. You can see that a little bit, I think. There's X, there's Y. Okay, and the block's moving up the hill. So here is our um, block right there, right in the middle. So what are the forces acting on this block? Well, there's gravity straight down. toward the center of the earth, right? Can't change that. And uh, this angle here is our theta, as before. The angle between our weight vector and the negative y-axis is theta. That's gonna be our 32 degrees right there. That's our weight. That's one force that acts on the block. What other force acts on the block? The normal force, which is always perpendicular to the surface of contact. So the normal force is this way. In the positive y direction. There it is. Now this is chapter five. There is no friction in chapter five, so there is no friction on this example here. But the thing is gonna be slowed down, right? The thing is, the, the, I meant to say this before, as it moves up, it's gonna be slowed down. Gravity is gonna put the brakes on it. And what we want to know is how high does it rise, how, or rather how far up the incline does it go before it momentarily stops before it turns back around. So here, the velocity is going to be zero. At the end, the F is going to be zero. Okay? So that is our free body diagram. That is the whole thing right there. We have to sum forces, right? Before we do that, we need to resolve our mg is not along x or y, right? It's at an angle of theta relative to the negative y-axis. So it's not along the x direction or the y direction. So we have to resolve it into its components, same as it ever was. You have to do that. There's going to be a, a, a force downhill here. Right? And a force opposed to the normal force here. Okay? And if you go back and look at one of those early, well, the first time, I think it was the walrus, or was it, no, it was the toboggan example. Okay? Or maybe the walrus one. One of those first ones where I did an inclined plane, inclined plane problem. I said that the component of the weight downhill is always mg sine theta. 
and you can take that to the bank. Doesn't matter how the incline is inclined. That component in the negative x direction is mg sine theta. And this one here, opposed to the normal force, is always mg cosine theta. And you can convince yourself of that by using one of these triangles, either that triangle there or this triangle here. This is the easier one right there with the theta in it. Just bring your mg sine theta vector down here to complete the triangle and do your trigonometry. mg sine theta downhill, mg cosine theta opposed to the normal. So our free body diagram is done and all of our vectors have resolved themselves into the x and y axes, which is just the way it should be. So that's the first step. Second step, as you'll remember coming back to you like a sweet dream, we apply Newton's second law in both the x and y directions. All right, so let's write them down. Sum of all forces in the x direction is ma in the x direction. Okay. What direction is the acceleration going to be in? X or y? It's going to be in the x direction because we oriented our axes so that all the motion occurs along the x axis. That's why we rotate the axis. So that all the mo uh, our axes, so that all the motion takes place along one of them. It makes life simpler when it happens that way. So all the acceleration will be in the x direction. So we next line that I write, I'm just going to call that a, not a sub x, because all of the acceleration is in the x direction. There is no a sub y. So what are the forces in the x direction? Well, let's look at it. Consult your free body diagram, and it will tell you how to unpack the left-hand side of Newton's second law, mg sine theta. That's the only x force, and it's in the negative direction. So minus mg sine of theta equals ma. Okay, we can simplify this. We can divide out the m, right? Why not? So we can write this as a equals g. Actually, I uh, move the a over to the left-hand side for reasons you'll see in just a second. Don't have to, but it's uh, for a, it's from a teaching point of view, it makes it better. It's g minus g sign. Notice the acceleration is negative, which it should be because it points that way in the negative x direction. The net force in the x direction is negative, therefore the acceleration in the x direction will be negative. So that's our acceleration. That's as far as we can go with our x forces. Now remember we're asking for displacement here. Stay with me. Okay, stay with me. Let's go ahead and see what we can learn from our y equation. I'm going to have to switch this, I believe, to my yellow pen. Yep. So some of the forces in the y direction is m a y. But what is a y equal to, class? It is equal to zero because we oriented our, our axes so that all the motion was in the x direction and none of it's in the y direction. Therefore, sum of forces in the y direction is going to be zero. But what is that? How can we express it? Well, again, look at your free body diagram. Along the y-axis, we have normal force minus mg cosine theta, right? Negative y direction. So n minus mg cosine theta equals zero. And so look, we can find our normal force. Normal force is mg cosine theta. Plug in your numbers, just put, plug them straight in there, uh, and you get 12 newtons. Okay, normal force 
just plug them in. Plug in your 32 for uh, theta, plug in your 9.81 meters per second squared for G, plug in your 1.5 kilograms for M, and you get 12 newtons. So that is the magnitude of the normal force right there. Okay. It's not equal to mg. It's equal to mg cosine theta because it's on an incline. Okay. A lot of times it is equal to mg as it was in the last couple of videos ago with the two blocks sliding, you know, with the friction and stuff. In that case, the normal force on block one was just mg. That's often the case, but not when you're on an inclined plane. In that case, in this case, it's mg cosine theta. All right. So, we have taken care of that, but how do we find the displacement? By the way, we've done the second step here. We have finished Newton's second law. And this, in the case, we went, we went a little bit further here and solved for what we were looking for. So that was really step three there, solving for what we're looking for. Remember, free body diagram, Newton's second law, solve for what you're looking for. The problem is, is that what we're looking for here, D, doesn't show up here. There's no distances up there at all. You can search this all day long and you won't find any distances in there. So what can we do? Well, we know A. We know the initial velocity. We know the final velocity. And we know our kinematics formulas, what we call the equations of motion. Yes, they're not going to go away. They're going to remain for the rest of the year. That's part of, partly why I'm doing this particular uh, example, is to remind you that even though they came before, we can't forget about them. Equation of motion three says VF squared equals VI squared plus two a d. Now, when we first wrote it, it was delta x. Displacement was delta x. All right. Delta x and d are the same thing. Okay. And we know everything we need to know to find the displacement because we now know we know the acceleration. Uh, velocity final is what? It is zero. So the displacement equals minus vi squared over 2a. And we know that. So the displacement is minus vi squared over 2g over minus 2g sine theta. Where did the minus sign come from, you ask? I heard you asking that. Even if you didn't voice it aloud, I heard it. The minus sign came from the fact that to solve this for d, we had to subtract my, had to subtract vi squared from both sides. Two steps algebra there. One, we subtracted vi squared from both sides. Second step, we divided by 2a to isolate d. You need to see that. Most of you do. Most, I think most of you do. Um, some of you may not, you need to know exactly how I did that. So that's our answer and we can put our numbers in. D is minus 3.7 meters per second uh, squared uh, minus 2.981 uh, meters per second squared times sine of 32. And you do that and you get 1.3 meters. That is the answer. D 1.3 meters. So don't forget the big picture. Free body diagram. Newton's second law. Solve for what you're looking for. Free body diagram, Newton's second law, solve for what you're looking for. That's the formula. See you next time.